And what is it that I really am? Probably just the average woman. I believe that for a relationship to work, your man has to be a little bit scared of you. I am the strong, vocal, independent woman that I am because of my father. Your soulmate's your teammate. Um, the ability to reproduce life. That makes you a goddess? It, it gives me the essence of a goddess. Who told you that? Um, it's in the word of God. Where? I won't quote any chapters or verse right now. You feel that me saying that I have the essence of a goddess is what's holding me back from having a marriage. Yep, that's a large part of it. And how is that? How does that make sense? Because you think that you're more than what you really are. And what is it that I really am? Probably just the average woman. And what will lead you to believe that? Women that are the best of the best at the top, they get wiped up. And you're a goddess who have to wear hair pieces. I don't have to wear hair pieces. I choose to. And that does not define my essence of my of me being a goddess either. Well, have you been able to manifest a husband? I have not been able to manifest a husband, but why not? Again, that that also does not take wait, away wait, from wait. my You're ability the, to be a goddess. The, hold on, you have the essence and the power of a goddess to reproduce, but you don't have nobody to reproduce with. Does that make any sense? Women place themselves on pedestal that no one is going to match. And when they come across these little desperate men, they're the only ones that's going to treat them like a woman feels inside of her head. That's why I tell guys, when women start showing you they're delusional, they're no good to nobody at all. Like she said, she's a goddess, but you cannot seem to get a man. Women that actually live in reality, those are the ones that get married. Those are the ones that have a happy relationship. The rest of you, you just get ran through, used and abused, and then you sit on the internet all day and all night complaining, protesting to get the guy that you want. This is going to sound nuts, but I've never heard anyone say it on the internet, so I'm going to say it. I firmly believe that for a relationship to work, your man has to be a little bit scared of you. Like, I need my man to see the slightest glimpse of the devil when he looks at me, because I'm fucking crazy. And for the record, we do live in a patriarchal society where the rules were created for men, by men, and will always bend for men. So I feel like the least you can do is keep your man on his toes. Scare him a little. Why is your strategy to bully a man into loving you? to shaming a man into loving you, but you go putting a man down in order to get him to love you. That's narcissism, sweetie. You need to change your frame of thinking because you and the whole culture is suffering from it. Oh, look, it's another girl complained about being stared at in the gym because she's wearing shorts that clearly don't fit her and she pulls them up so high that she's literally ripping herself a new one. I'm just gonna stay right here really quick just for this one because that is crazy she put the camera there. Now, look, okay, if you really have to pull your shorts down to cover your cheeks, just consider that it might be, just might be, that you're drawing attention to yourself. Like, if you don't want people staring at your butt, then, like, don't put it out there. Like, oh, that just seems like a really easy solution. I don't know. It makes a woman feel pretty whenever she could complain about a man looking at her or staring at her. Really low self-esteem women are the ones out there aiming to get a man in trouble. The first place is the gym. Why? Because it's easy for you to get away with wearing sleazy clothes. Fathers <laughs> create the independent women that society hates so much. Mm -hmm. I am not who I am because my mother. I am the strong, vocal, independent woman that I am because of my father. I will create that independent woman that has to, like I know for a fact that one thing that I had to really learn as a woman and as a wife was I had to learn how to soften up. Mm -hmm. I had to learn how to take that armor off for my man because my father didn't taught me. Whenever I see a father out here that has his daughter in martial arts, and has his daughter boxing and doing masculine stuff, it's good that you're spending time with your daughter, but you are programming her to be masculine. A lot of girls who dads have pushed them to being tough typically end up in the arms of another woman because when she comes across the man that she likes, it's okay to date that weaker guy, but then she's going to ask for dominancy out of him. And next thing you know, she's going to be a baby mother because she does not know how to soften up. She only knows how to be tough. So for all the fathers out there, you still got to teach your daughters how to be independent and feminine at the same time. If not, they could become very masculine. 
Setting a date to meet a guy at a park is literally a waste of time. In my opinion. Sis, no need to go to a park. You can talk to him safely in your own home via FaceTime. I gather that you both will be chatting and talking prior to even meeting for the first time, right? So he should know by then if he likes you or not. And if you were his absolute dream girl, like think celebrity dream girl. Do you really think he would be taking you to some park? Setting if a guy is trying to meet you at the park and walk and get to know you, that's the guy you want to go on a date with because nine times out of 10, he's valuing his time and he wants to take the time out to get to know the person that he's probably going to invest time with. When, when women get to the point where everything is lights, camera, action, I need it up front, show me my value by taking me out to eat immediately, those women have been single too long. And a lot of people that have been single too long, you're trying to do everything from your computer. You're trying to FaceTime. You're trying to talk. You're trying to really build a whole relationship from the internet. If a man wants to get to know you, he's going to last longer. These type of women, you're no good for nobody. And the problem is majority of women are just like you. Y'all want to sit at home on a couch and then walk outside when it's time to get married while you interview everybody on your phone and you keep coming up short. You definitely can, but you can do that without being rude as well. That's the whole thing. That's the key. Okay, you don't okay. be rude and you don't be okay. disrespectful. Oh, okay, okay, but you don't have to talk over me either. Talk but you don't have to talk over me. So if you don't want to talk and you're going to talk over me, you could just be quiet and let me say what I got to say. You get that from your mama. But I love you and I miss you anyway. Bye-bye. Brainwash it of the mom right into the kid and there he go being the beta male that got to deal with it. You have to be careful who you're having children with because if she's going to spend most of the time with the children, this is what you got to watch out for. For all you dudes out there trying to be stepdads, imagine what she's telling the kid to go against the father and you got to come in and just deal with it. Why would I help a man get on his feet if there are men who are already standing up? Me not because they're standing up next to the woman that helped him get on his feet. <laughs> Now, there's nothing wrong with finding a man who's established. I just think that there's nothing wrong either with finding a man who's determined. Your soulmate's your teammate. And she's absolutely right. When you find a guy who has his mind made up that he's going to be successful, you typically want to get behind these type of men, ladies, and grow with him. Because when he gets to the top, nowadays, these guys are going to protect their money with a prenup. You don't want to spend all that little bit of time trying to make your hair good, your skin good, your clothes good just to get the guy of your dreams and turn around and have a roadblock with a prenup. When you help him build, he's less likely to ask for that prenup. Worst thing is a man who has money but is cheap and stingy. He is worse than a broke man. Next caller. Because even though he has finally got himself to a financial status, that means he didn't manage to change his mindset. And if you get in a serious relationship with this kind of man, he's definitely going to be stingy to you in other aspects as well. God forbid you decide to have a kid with that kind of man. Oh my goodness. Look, there's only one life to live and you can't take your money to the grave with you. So nobody got time to deal with a man who got money but is stingy and cheap. Nope. Next caller. The richest people in the world are stingy and cheap. This is how you maintain your money. You don't wake up every day trying to live life to the fullest because you can't die and take the money with you. The objective is survival. The man who is going to survive is going to be cheap. He's going to pay attention to every single dollar that he spends because he's working hard to make the money. That's the type of man women sh should be with. You have to understand, the more superficial you are, the more broke you're going to be wealthy fine man ask me what the fuck i bring to the table 
I've never had that. Never. Never. Because you know why? Because one, they brought the table, and they brought the cutlery, and they brought the meal, and they brought the wine, and I showed up, and I looked pretty, and I was funny. Because they already saw my value before I even opened my mouth. A man don't care what you bring into the table as long as he's clapping cheeks at the end of the day. Like you said, they were. They took you out to eat. They had fun with you. When they got tired of you, they gave you away. Now you're still by yourself talking about when you were with them. Where is the accountability? Why is it always our fault? Yes, I chose the nice guy. You know what happened? Turned out to be a covert narcissist. Completely destroyed my self-worth and confidence. So then I decided to remove myself from the dating pool and heal and grow and evolve into who I am today. Meaning now I'm celibate, not dating, and I'm happy with my life. But now I'm too picky because my standards and boundaries are really strong and really high. And I'm going to die with a bunch of cats. Because I'm too picky. I guess I'll take the cats or the bear or the shark and I'll stay alone if these are my options. What you choose to do is your choice, but there's no point of rambling about it. See, when guys make remarks about women being cat ladies, those are typically the ladies who think that the grass is greener on the other side. If you're happy just not being with anyone, there's no reason for you to complain. I hear quite often women say they get along better with men than they do with women. Well, one, the man probably want to sleep with you. And two, men look at us as a weaker vessel. So they're going to carry you a different way than a woman would. But sometimes I think when women say that, it is because you're looking for the woman, the other woman, to bring the friendship instead of you leading with the friendship and learning how to have a friendship with another woman. And sometimes people say, well, you know, it's my childhood feminine wound. I have a wound when it comes to my femininity. Okay, who care about that? Learn how to be a good friend because you know how it feels when you don't have a good friend. But I don't think it's a woman to woman issue. I just think that we have not been taught how to be friends and how to have boundaries and standards and still be able to be ourselves in these friendships with women when they are doing certain things. Okay. Every woman that I seen hanging around a group of guys was always toxic. And the man that she ends up with was always the simp. It's always the dude that ends up with her after all the dudes have ran through her because she just magically don't get along with girls. No, she just has female friends that's not going to bow down to her. But the men she surround herself with or a bunch of beta males that she could control. And another thing, um, fellas, if you want to text her good morning, good afternoon, you know, good night, every day, what you doing? How was your day? Like, every day? Um, could you please add some fucking value to her life? Because texting me being in my business every day, just to, just to do it, is just giving you fucking free access for what? Because you want to get to know me? Bro, please, send me some flowers. Uh, send, pay for my lunch today. You got gas in your car today? Do some gentleman things. You know, since you're not in the vicinity to change my motherfucking tires and put gas in my car. Just like, try to add just a little bit of value. You know, send me some scriptures. You know what I'm saying? Send me some 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 real life uh, shit that I could hear or see or watch. Like, texting me every day, what you doing? How are you? How was your day? Oh, look, like, what you into? It's annoying as fuck. I don't, I don't even like being on the phone like that, buddy. I really don't. I swear to God. I be ignoring the fuck out of people. So, do me that favor. If you want to be a part of my life, just add a little value to it. So I can sprinkle a little value back in yours. That's it. That's it. Show me how serious you is about wanting to know me. This is why you only text and call when you're setting up a date. Save the conversation when you're face to face with a woman. Why? Squeezing your messages into her short attention span is going to have her talking like this. Save it for the date. I feel like the groupies, like in the 90s, they were a little more smooth. They were a little more subtle. Who said that? I just feel like that's what it used to be. My mama said it wasn't like that. It wasn't like that? My mama said Tupac had lines outside his hotel, like his room. Like, no, I ain't gonna lie, room. I did hear that about Chris Brown one time. They really asked, like, what they were doing. She told me, like, it was lined up like that. I just feel like fandom always gonna be fandom. How do you deal with, like, groupies? Because I know sometimes you gotta slide. Bring them back to that hotel, nephew. I don't do that. You don't ever do that? You can ask them. I don't do that. You I ain't lonely. leaving with nobody in the front row. Wait, why not the front row? <laughs> I done tried that before, and I shouldn't want to pay to get in. Like, that's really taking food out your mouth. Like, Do you feel like the front row, like, you too big of a fan. You want a kind of fan. No, I'm just saying. <laughs> like, I'll, 50th row. No, I ain't even. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm not leaving with nobody out the crowd, though. Okay. I ain't doing that. Like, Even if she in the balcony? I'm not leaving with nobody out the crowd. Straight.
Come Them girls in the crowd got bad intentions. Those are groupies. Groupies are out to get close to you. And if they can't have you, then they're going to destroy your life. But at the same time, when a man gets used to women just wanting to sleep with him, he realizes that there's no connection with these women. When you're broken young, you can sleep with women that you don't like. But when you start gaining money and popularity and all of a sudden it's available to you easily, you start to think what type of woman is really with me willing to do all these things. It's going to lead to more troubles down the road. It's called maturity. When a man matures, that's when a woman loses all of her power. The whole men can't handle me. I'm like, men don't want to have to handle you. So there are a lot of women who think, oh, the way I relate to men is by being either aggressive or just constantly disagreeable and fighting him on everything and not helping him, not cooperating. Like you're supposed to be dating this man or in a relationship you're competing and competing and you think that that's cute or something. I will tell you from the male perspective that is driving him nuts. He's already out there fighting the world and trying to battle the world to provide for you, his family and so on. He doesn't want to then be battling. <laughs> He wants a safe place yeah, to, to, to be, to like be a, battling a you as well. And it's just like women see things backwards. They run out and become the successor that they want in a man. So women think if I get a nice car, show him independence, show him that I don't need him, then he's going to like me when she's not understanding. No, that's what you really wanted out of a man. A man really wants a submissive woman. He's not looking for a soldier. And I think a lot of these women that's driving the BMWs, the Benzes, the luxury cars, you have a problem dating because you're not intimidating, men. Men just want to compete with you. They're not trying to love you because you became the man that you wanted to marry.